Hey Vinyl Community people and all my music loving friends, it's Mike MGK Boston back with another video. It's a cloudy kind of gloomy spring day here in the greater Boston area. We're around high 40s, low 50s. It's not hardly a beach day, but uh, you're not here for a weather forecast. You're here to talk about music or hear me talk about music. So um, today's subject is basically I went to a record show in Burlington, uh, Massachusetts. It's about half an hour north of uh, where I live here in Metro West. And uh, just going to highlight, I came out with a pretty big stack that day. It was a really good show. Uh, I was there for a few hours, talked to some interesting people, like you always do at these things. And uh, I just thought I'd go over a dozen or so, um, again, uh, releases that I picked up at that show. So breaking right into it, you uh, all know if you have uh, subscribe or watch my channel frequently, I do uh, have a thing for uh, classic country. Anything beyond 1980, I consider new country. There's some stuff that I like, but mostly for me, it's 60s and 70s stuff. And uh, this is no exception. It's the hag himself, the late great Merle Haggard. Uh, this is called My Farewell to Elvis, uh, From Graceland to the Promised Land. Um, this was released in 77. Um, it sounds like when I listened to this through, I've only listened to it through once. Um, it was cobbled together in a hurry. Uh, it's not. It's not great. Uh, I was expecting, you know, it's all Elvis covers, of course, done by Merle Haggard and his band. Um, you know, of course, Elvis Presley died in August of 77, and this was released the same year, so they must have thrown this together in a hurry. Um, the vocal accompaniment, though, uh, he's got the Jordan Ayers on here, who were Elvis's backup singers. Um, the highlight on this is probably his version of Heartbreak Hotel. Uh, but you can see, you know, all the other standards, even Blue Christmas is on here, Blue Suede Shoes. Are You Lonesome Tonight? He does an okay version with that of that ballad. But um, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this. It may go in the reject pile. I'm going to give it another listen through. Uh, I'm a big Merle Haggard fan, but again, it just sounds like this was thrown together in a hurry, and it's it's not great. I was expecting more of uh, his interpretation of Elvis's songs. Like I've said before, cover versions are great, um, but I don't want to hear it sound just like the original. I'd like it to be interpreted by the person doing the cover, you know. Uh, just makes it more appealing. Uh, to the listener. But anyway, Merle Haggard, uh, and that's his uh, uh, My Farewell to Elvis. Release date on that 77. One more from Merle. Uh, this is much better. Uh, this is Keep Moving On. Uh, I believe the release date on this one, uh, 1975. Yeah. So the single on this, Moving On, that was actually an American television show, something about truckers. Um, some guy named Claude Akins, I, I remember he was the, the actor that played the trucker guy but I was just a child at the time. Um, but this is real. This is really good, more traditional Merle Haggard. Um, the, the highlight on this, there's a Dolly Parton cover here called Kentucky Gambler. That's a good honky-tonk, uh, good honky-tonk drinking tune, if you will. Here in Frisco, a man's got to give up a lot. A lot of these are ballads, uh, September I'm in Miami. Um, but again, um, yeah, Kentucky Gambler, that's a great one. You want to look that one up. And there's a couple of pictures of Merle. Here he is. Uh, a stop along the highway for a little relaxation. I don't know who that guy is with him, but uh, and there he is with uh, yeah with the Strangers. That was his band, Merle Haggard and the Strangers, big band. It looks like they're on the road, of course, touring. There he is on the front. Keep moving on. Uh, release date on that one again, 1975. All over the place today with uh, genres or styles, whatever you want to call them. We're into some reggae now. Uh, this release date on this one, 1982. Of course, Black Uhuru. This is probably my favorite album by these guys. Um, they, they were around probably since about 71, 72. And of course, this is 10 years later. This is 1982, uh, produced by um, Sly Sylvester and uh, Robbie Shakespeare, otherwise known as Sly and Robbie. Uh, this came out again like in 1982. Uh, it almost has an 80s vibe to it. Some of the synth stuff in the background, the instrumentation in this, but again, they got three guitarists. Uh, the vocals are great. Um, the female lead, her name escapes me. Um, you know, what is her name? Uh, there's too many personnel to rhyme them all off here. But anyway, here on the back, there's a couple of the guys. And uh, yeah, this is called, of course, Chill Out. Um, the title track is excellent. You want to look that one up. Wicked Act is very good. Um, and Fleety Foot is another one. You can look that up. But yeah, these, these guys are great. I've got a bunch of black Uhuru. I'm a big reggae guy. I really got into it when I was in university. Of course, uh, they were on the Island label, and Island had a ton of reggae artists um, on that label. But yeah, Black Uhuru, um, 
getting near summer, that's when I listen to a lot of this stuff. I'm kind of one of those seasonal listeners. Uh, I do a lot of jazz and blues in the winter, and then in the summer I switch over to a lot of reggae and a lot of jam bands, uh, that kind of thing. It goes with the seasons as the weather changes. But Black Uhuru, highly recommended that. Chill out. I was glad to find that at the show, and I got it for a pretty good price. This guy had a ton of reggae, so uh, that was just one. I bought a couple of Bob Marley um, things there. Uh, but I'm not I'm not going to get into those today. I've showed Bob Marley in the past, so I wanted to show something different today. So um, some American indie for you. Uh, this was released in 86. These guys were out of Wisconsin, the Bodines. I believe this is their debut. Uh, yeah, Love and Hope and Sex and Dreams. Um, traditional, um, I would call it rock and roll, uh, maybe folk rock. With It's electric, but it's not folk. Very traditional Americana uh, is another way to describe it. And it's actually produced by T-Bone Burnett. So anything he laid his hands on uh, was usually wor a worthy talent. And these guys are no exception. Uh, this is their best. They, they continued to put out music into the 90s, but this was their debut. And in my opinion, their best. They came in hot. The songwriting's really good. The, 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 the instrumentation's really good. Big single on this one is a song called She's a Runaway. They had a video for that on MTV and Much Music in Canada. Um, Fade Away is another one you may recognize, but yeah, the Bodines, uh, Love, I always get the title screwed up, Love and Hope and Sex and Dreams, four things going on there. The Bodines, released in 1986. So I mentioned, um, I did a video probably a month or two ago, and I highlighted, I don't know, it was uh, 10 plus 1, I think I called it, uh, 11 80s essentials, and I talked about this guy. Guys, Mike Oldfield, of course, the multi-instrumentalist that he is. He can play anything, any instrument that is. Um, this was his follow-up to Tubular Bells. Uh, release date on this one, I want to say 1975. So he was coming off um, a huge success of Tubular Bells. And, of course, uh, Richard Branson was a big fan, and he signed him to Virgin Records. There you are right there. I was watching a, a cool little documentary on YouTube the other night, and it was actually Richard Branson talking about Mike Oldfield, and it was, you know, the, the, the documentary was made right around the time of Tubular Bells and a young Richard Branson who had started Virgin. And now, you know, of course, he's the mega billionaire flying into outer space and doing all kinds of things. But he had a great ear for music, too. And uh, he was a friend uh, and fan of Mike Oldfield. So this is totally, I won't say it's not like Tubular Bells in that it's not all instrumental. He has a choir on this. Um, there's all kinds of, here's the, all the people on here. It's wild. There's a children uh, choir. Um, these kids down here, and I think that woman here, Sally Oldfield, is Mike Oldfield's wife or his sister, I'm not sure. Um, so there was African drummers on this, like these guys in the back, so there's got that world beat kind of feel to it. There's this Hereford City band who are sort of a Celtic outfit. There's everything going on on this. Um, and again, like I said, there's like a miniature choir in the background on some of it. It's, it's uh, in two parts. Uh, and there's actually two parts, and there's an actual, um, no, it is, it's just two parts. Uh, Omadon is part two, and of course, uh, part one. But yeah, uh, it goes up and down. Um, don't put this on in a party, you'll clear the room. This is totally an, uh, a listen you want. You just, headphones, or just put on your loudspeakers by yourself. Um, it's just, uh, this is, it's contemplative music, I would call it, but man, um, this guy, again, the credits on the back here, I gotta show this. It says, Mike Oldfield plays, and there's a long list of every instrument from harp, acoustic guitar, 12 string guitar, classical guitar, glockenspiel, and assorted percussion, electric organ, synthesizers. It's just, it's all over the place. And uh, yeah, of course, all music composed by Mike Oldfield and uh, produced and engineered uh, by Mike Oldfield. It looks like uh, September of 1975 was the recording date, and there he is, speaking of contemplatives, hanging out just in deep thought. But yeah, um, really love this. I, ha I have a copy on uh, CD, and again, as I've said, I'm not in the habit of duplicating what I have on CD, but I'm a huge Mike Oldfield guy, a bit of a completist at this point, so when I saw this, and it's a really clean copy, I jumped all over it, and it was a great price. Again, Omadon, if you like instrumental, um, if you if you've ever heard tubular bells uh, this was um, a good follow-up to that so again mike oldfield omadon all right so what are we into now all right we're heading into the psychedelic 60s uh the great kid from scotland himself it's donovan 
Sunshine Superman. Of course, this is biggest, um, biggest uh, commercial success. Uh, this came out uh, night summer in 1976. So um, whatever that means, it's dedicated to the bearer of the Eastern gift. He was into a lot of um, mystic, like mystic, not, not Christianity, just more like the Maharishi stuff, like the Beatles were getting into at the time. And um, yeah, so this on this, of course, the big hit, Sunshine Superman, you've probably heard that. And there's, uh, of course, Season of the Witch. That's a great one. Um, Bloomfield, Cooper and Stills, Super Session, they do a great version of... Uh, of Season of the Witch, look that up. I've mentioned the Super Session album before with uh, Mike Bloomfield, Al Cooper, and Stephen Stills, and that's not to be missed either. That's a great version of the Donovan song. But again, Sunshine Superman. Um, a friend of mine was in town for the marathon from Vancouver, a buddy of mine, Renee. I gave him a, a box of duplicate CDs that I had, and I gave him this Donovan Greatest Hits because I've dug deeper into Donovan and I've got most of that stuff now. So, um, and speaking of which, I just, I found this as well at that show. And it's uh, a gift from a flower to a garden, Donovan. This was, um, I guess, if you will, one of the first box sets. It's it's a double LP uh, recorded, uh, the year, came out the year after Sunshine Superman. And of course he was on the Epic label. This is really great. I mean, the sleeve, it's a box, like I said, it's, it's just worn over time, um, but the records themselves are in great shape. And as luck would have it, it comes with this nice book. Uh, and in the book, um, of course, are all lyric sheets with artwork to each of the song, each of the compositions on the album. And it's just like it came out of the store uh, back in 1967. This book, it's a little faded, of course, but, and then, of course, this is Donovan, but it's in, it's just in, in mint condition. Um, some of the highlights on this for me, uh, Widow, with, Widow with Shawl, a portrait. Look that up. That's excellent. Uh, Tinker and the Crab. Um, Song of the Naturalist Wife, Isle of uh, Islay. That was just the lyric sheet that I just showed you. I'm probably pr pronouncing that incorrectly. Isle, Isle of Islay or Islay. And la lay, lay of the Last Tinker. I mean, it's a double LP, as I said. So again, the paper sleeves I'll probably replace uh, with the plastic sleeves that I buy because um, these are pretty worn. But again, I just cleaned this up. Um, I was going through the pile and I was cleaning all these up and I gave this a full listen through on uh, Tuesday night and it just sounds really excellent. It's in great shape. This is highly recommended. If you like music from this period, of course, you know what Donovan was all about. Kind of a, a, like a folk, uh, not definitely not rock, but traditional folk in the, in, in the tradition of Fairport Convention, if you're familiar with that, Sandy Denny and Fairport Convention, uh, kind of a, from that same period. But again, he was from Scotland. Uh, and yeah, it's a gift from a flower to a garden. It's really a gift for your ears, for your ears. It's just tremendous. I'm really happy to find that. Maybe you can listen to that again later. It's just listen to both records through. You can't stop. It's so good. All right. Um, I mentioned these guys, I think on that eighties essential list a couple weeks ago. So I was happy to see this. Uh, this was called cafe blue when it was released in the UK, when it was pressed, the U S pressing is called, of course, my ever changing mood. So there's some confusion with that sometimes but you always know when you have uh, the North American copy because it's called my ever-changing moods and not cafe blue as I said and of course there's Paul Weller and there's Mick Talbot uh, just hanging out having a coffee and it uh, looks like a little cigarette action there for for the guys so anyway yeah of course uh, the title track well there's cafe blue but my ever-changing moods again this sleeves not in great shape but the, the vinyls in, in almost near mint condition uh, you're the best thing of course, you know, you're the best thing that ever happened. That's how the song goes. It's a really nice one. Um, this being their debut, like Weller, as I said before, he really veered into uh, soul, traditional American soul music, and, and with a little bit of jazz sprinkled throughout it. So it was a tall order uh, and big departure from the jam. But this is really, really an excellent album. Mick Talbot can play a few different instruments. There he is on keyboards. And of course, Paul Weller is a brilliant guitar player. There's the two of the gents right there. And then uh, drummer down at the bottom, there's Steve White. Um, not sure who their bass player was, but anyway. Um, yeah, Cafe Blue in the UK pressing, as I said, or My Ever-Changing Moods. Excellent, excellent album. I believe the release date on that was 1984. Great year for music. All right, traditional classic rock coming up. Served up by Foghat. This is a live album uh, released in 1977. Uh, not sure where this was recorded. 
just uh, on a mobile unit. So remixed on mobile unit, blah, blah, blah. I'm not sure the actual venue or if it was multi across multiple venues, but really great photos of the band on this. And this is like, you can look at this sleeve. It's in really terrific condition. So you can see this pops out like this. So when you pull this out, there's a collage of, of the band, right? Man, if that doesn't scream 1977, I don't know what does. Look at that photo there. They're probably on a, in their tour van, um, you know, and they're in the mo some seedy motel, up to no good. And these look like fans. They're all wearing hats with fog. Um, yeah, so uh, just really wicked band. Always thought they were American, but they're actually from England. Uh, they sound kind of in the same vein as like a bad company, traditional Midwestern classic rock, but... I really dig Fog Hat, um, and this has all the hits on it. Fool for the Cities on here. Uh, of course, the Willie Dixon uh, blues number, I Just Want to Make Love to You, is on here. That's a really brilliant cover. And Slow Ride, there's like an eight or nine minute version of that on here. That's a really good tune as well. This is Fog Hat Live, 1977. Got that for a great price too, and it's, it's in excellent shape. So speaking of rock, there's the rock, and there's the rock of Billy. And bringing, uh, bringing it here is Robert Gordon, of course, with guitarist Link Ray. Uh, this is called Fresh Fish Special, of course, named after, and look at that haircut, um, Elvis Presley, I guess, in a, which whatever movie it was, um, might have been uh, oh, Jailhouse Rock, as the story goes. So that was the name of a haircut that Elvis sported in the movie Jailhouse Rock. And, of course... Robert Gordon was all about the rockabilly and, you know, I wouldn't call him an Elvis imitator, but it was, he was uh, directly, of course, influenced by uh, Elvis Presley and others, uh, you know, from the original, from the fifties. So here he is on the cover and on the back here, yeah, there he is with Link Ray on the back. So this, this is really solid. The way I walk kicks it off and there's actually a cover on here. Well, was that, I don't know if it was written because this the year this came out in 1978. So you can see the credit on there, Bruce, Springs, Bruce Springsteen Fire. Of course, that was on Born in the USA that came out in 83 or 84 years later. Uh, and Springsteen plays keyboards on this, on the version on here. So I wouldn't call it a cover. Um, I think he might have written this for Robert Gordon. Robert Gordon is from the New York City area and Springsteen, of course, from Asbury Park, New Jersey. Um, so Robert Gordon... Um, played, you know, he came up at CBGB's, of course, you know, the legendary club in New York City, you know, along the, alongside the Ramones and Blondie and others. Um, so yeah, he's, he's still active today, apparently. Don't have anything beyond this album. I may seek out some more. Um, I, I posted something on Facebook a few weeks ago uh, after I picked this Robert Gordon up and an old friend of mine, Jeff, who lives up in Ottawa, he actually met Robert Gordon at a, at a gig uh, I believe in the Ottawa area sometime in the 90s. And uh, anyway, so Robert Gordon with Link Ray. Uh, again, this is uh, hold up for you. Fresh Fish Special. Really good. If you like Rockabilly, definitely the Stray Cats would count him as an influence. I'm sure of it. Brian Setzer would um, point Robert Gordon as an influence for his style. All right, uh, shifting gears again, but in, in, in a similar time period, that Robert Gordon album, album was 78. Uh, this is uh, 1981. This is, of course, the Human League, Pioneers in the Synth Pop Movement. And this is their third album and their commercial breakthrough, if you will. It came out in 81. I remember when this came out. I did have a copy. I don't know what happened to it. And I uh, always liked this. So when I saw it, um, this guy had a ton of 80s stuff, and it was all in really, really excellent shape. I mean, you can see the gatefold here. It's... It's perfect. There's not, you know, not a fold, not a bend in this. It's not, no wear. You know, you usually get that circle of wear with something this old. Perfect. The pictures of various members of the bands here on the inside. Of course, lead vocalist was a guy named uh, uh, Phil Oki. It's a six-piece band, uh, two female uh, singers. The names escape me. Like, background vocals, really excellent. Um, but this is definitely, it was that whole fashion, synth, um, bowie influence stuff, beginning of the the British New Wave movement in the early 80s. Um, you know, the big hit on this one was a song called uh, Love Action. And uh, yeah, Don't You Want Me was an even bigger hit on this. Uh, side two is the better side for me. Of course, with those two hits, there's an instrumental on here called Get Carter. And uh, side one's good too, don't get me wrong, but side two, sometimes I find uh, one side's better than the other with an album. And in this case, again, like I said, side two, but Human League Dare, 1981. If you like that synth pop sound, early new wave, definitely seek this out.
I mean, you've probably heard Don't You Want Me, and maybe you didn't even know who it was. Of course, it's the Human League. All right. Uh, shifting gears to some jazz, uh, vocal jazz. Uh, it's Nancy Wilson. Uh, this, of course, she was on Capitol. She had a, I think it was about a 20 record deal with them, and this was the eighth or ninth release uh, into that deal she had with Capitol. Release date on this is 1963. And uh, her accompaniment on this is, uh, of course, the Gerald Wilson Orchestra. I have a few um, of his of his albums. Uh, just it's nice orchestra music in the tradition of Nelson Riddle. Of course, Nelson Riddle had a long-standing uh, relationship with Frank Sinatra and was his was his band uh, for a number of years. Also, uh, of course, on the Capitol label. Um, so anyway, yeah, Nancy Wilson, eight or nine uh, records into that contract. Like I said. And these are, this is just a collection of, of standards. And she's just such an excellent, the female equivalent of Frank Sinatra. Just a wonderful voice. It's just like syrup, just so sweet. Um, some of these, the highlights on this, The Best Is Yet To Come, The Very Thought Of You. I mean, these are all standards. They've been done by a number of people. Someone To Watch Over Me, um, and Suffering With The Blues. You may look up any of those numbers and uh, check out the great Nancy Wilson. She's still alive. I, I guess as the story goes, as it got into the 90s, she went into a more, um, veered away from uh, traditional vocal jazz and went into a more uh, adult contemporary, I call it dentist office, waiting room music. Not very good. So, uh, but her earlier stuff really can't be beat. Um, this is the third Nancy Wilson record I picked up. This jacket looks banged up, but the record itself uh, is in uh, really great condition. Of course, like I said, of course she was... Uh, yeah, like I said, on the Capitol label right there, you can see the Capitol logo. And this is in stereo. This is the stereo copy, not mono. I don't even know if there was a mono available. Uh, I don't get down in the weeds with mono versus stereo. I know a lot of the vinyl community guys, that's their trip. But, um, you know, just maybe my ear's not that critical. But um, this is really excellent. Any Nancy Wilson from this period, uh, from, you know, late 50s into the 60s, into the early 70s is worth seeking out again. Look for her on the Capitol label. You can't go wrong with any of that stuff. All right, uh, where are we now? Brian Ferry. Uh, yeah, did a video. One of the first videos I did uh, when I started this Vinyl Community stuff, I did, a, it was three of my favorite vocalists, and it was Chrissy Hine, Brian Ferry, and the, the third one at the time I picked uh, Escapes Me, but that's one of my earlier videos. Of course, he was the lead vocalist of Roxy Music, and this was his third um, solo effort. He would put out solo albums, concurrently while performing at the same time with Roxy Music. And again, like I said, this is his third uh, release. And uh, it's a really good one at that. Uh, for years, some, somehow this one evaded me, but uh, this is a really excellent copy. It's in great shape. And the personnel on this, uh, you can see there's Chris Spedding. I mentioned Robert Gordon earlier. Of course, Link Ray was his guitarist for a, a bunch of his records. Um, late 70s when that, when that first one came, or second or third came out with Link Ray. No, it was the second release there with Link Ray. By 1990, he picked up with uh, this guy, Chris Spedding on guitar. Chris Spedding was a very sought after session guy. He was a British guy, but he played both continents, both in the United States with different artists. Um, if you listen to this uh, Pretender song, Stop Your Sobbing, that's, that's Chris Spedding doing the solo on that. He was a good friend of Chrissy Hines, but he was never in the Pretenders, but he, he would sit in, in on some studio stuff once in a while uh, after James Honeyman Scott passed on uh, from a drug overdose. Uh, but there's Chris Spedding there in the background. So Chris, yeah, like I said, later on, he played with Robert Gordon and among, among a, a number of other people. Another guy on this that was pretty well known as a session guy was John Wetton, played bass. He was also a vocalist. Um, he played with Uriah Heep. Um, who else? Oh, and King Crimson for one or two albums. King Crimson had that never-ending family tree with people coming and going and John Wetton was in uh, King Crimson for a short time I can't I can't think of what King Crimson album he was on but he was in the band oh well, this almost looks like Jerry Hall uh, in the background uh, Brian Ferry's old girlfriend so this came out in uh, 76 so again this is his third album I think this was the follow-up to the Bride Strip Bear after he broke up with uh, uh, Jerry Hall as I just mentioned he later married Mick Jagger of course so yeah, this is, of course, he was on Atlantic, Atco. There it is. So um, yeah, big highlight on this one is, of course, a uh, title track on here. Uh, let's stick together, if you can see that. Track one. 
Uh, that's, of course, a cover. Uh, I'm not sure who wrote it. Um, Brian Ferry was always doing cover versions, and he'd really make them his own and do a good job of it. Um, there's a couple of Ferry originals on here. Chance Meeting. Um, actually, there's an Everly Brothers cover on here. Uh, Price of Love. He does a really does that justice, too. Uh, shame, Shame, Shame. Uh, not sure who wrote that. That's a cover, too. It says Reed. I don't think it's Lou Reed, but I could be wrong. And uh, Casanova is a nice ballad on this. But yeah, Lou Reed, or pff, Lou Reed, Brian Ferry, Let's Stick Together, 1976, the release date on that. Really great singer. And speaking of John Wett and the guy I mentioned that was playing bass on that. And, and by the way, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention this sax player. This guy named Chris Mercer. I don't know much about him, but I was listening to this last night and I was like, Man, that sounds just like Andy McKay. I'm a big Roxy Music fan, and Andy McKay was there. Uh, they had a sax, full-time saxophone player, and that was Andy McKay. I, you'd swear you're listening to Roxy Music on the title track. There's a, a sax solo, and it sounds just like Andy McKay, but it, um, of course, it's this guy, Chris Mercer. I'm going to look up uh, some more and see who else he played with. Again, he, Ferry would have these session guys coming and going uh, on his solo albums. Um, never had always the same band uh, until later on into the 80s. Uh, he solidified a lineup um, when Roxy Music split up and he put together a full full time band and he's still touring today. And apparently this summer, Roxy Music are back together, but the tickets are ridiculous and they're playing these stadium shows. I don't know how they're going to pull it off. Uh, they're playing TD Garden here uh, in Boston. Roxy Music are a truly excellent band, but they were never a stadium band, more an Orpheum size or theaters. Um, but anyway, I wish them well. Uh, I won't be going. Tickets are ridiculous. Like I said, 250 300 bucks. And I saw Brian Ferry back in 1988. Uh, Bette Noir tour. He was great. I'm all set with that. Um, I'll just listen to the studio stuff. And back to John Wetton, as I said, the bass player. Of course, he was one of the founding members of this super group. Uh, it's called Asia. You all know this. This came out in uh, 1982. It was released on their debut. Of course, this was a super group, former members from Yes, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. Of course, Carl Palmer, former drummer for Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, plays drums on this. Of course, uh, John Wetton does lead vocals. Like I said, he was also a singer and a bass player on this. This is just a side note. I had this, I've had this record since it came out, but I was speaking of John Wetton, I thought, as I do in my videos, if there's an interesting sidebar, I'll take you there. And this is, this is one right here. This is super polished pop rock. I wouldn't call it classic rock, but it's just... You know, there's some really, there's progish uh, moments, but it's accessible prog rock to the listeners. A song like Wildest Dreams gets a little extravagant at points, but it's really listenable to the average Joe that's, that wouldn't sit down maybe and listen to an Emerson, Lake and Palmer album. Uh, of course, Heat of the Moment was the big single. That's the one everybody knows uh, from when it came out. And of course, really cool artwork on this. Um, the artist escapes me that, uh, they, that did all the Asia covers. The same guy, he did some, a bunch of the Yes artwork too. Again, the name escapes me. Um, it's not in the credits here that I see either. Oh, yes, it is. Of course it is. There it is. Roger Dean uh, cover design. Yeah, I actually, there was a Roger Dean coffee table book. I always regret not picking that up. I saw years ago, but maybe I'll, I'll look for that online. But again, Asia cover art by Roger Dean. Uh, their debut. Very listenable. Uh, pretty top 40, but uh, again, if it's good, it's good, as I always say. So back to some more jazz. Um, I'm a big fan of the Modern Jazz Quartet, mentioned them several times before, um, but this is with accompaniment by a guy named Lorindo Almeida. I, I mentioned he's a Brazilian um, samba, bossa nova guy from the 60s, he's long dead. Um, I have a Charlie Bird album, another guitar player, where the two of them, it's, it's, it's a duet album, Charlie Bird with Lorindo Almeida, that I picked up within the past year. And of course, this is Modern Jazz Quartet. Um, like I said, with accompaniment by um, Lorinda Almeida, and they do a, an excellent version. Speaking of samba, One Note Samba, the classic by Antonio Carlos Jobim. They do a great version of that, and of course, this is called Collaboration. Uh, recommended this to a friend of mine that I'm, I, the guy I mentioned earlier, uh, was out in Vancouver. He likes this stuff, but uh, he's a CD guy, and the CD, they're go it's going for over 100 bucks, and I, I got this for 10 bucks at that record show, and it's, it's really in excellent shape. I was, it was amazed to me. It must have been a limited release on compact disc, but yeah, he was looking for it. It was over a hundred bucks. Really unbelievable. Let's see what's on the inside here, out of curiosity. Not oh, really nothing. It's just a typical, yeah, the old Atlantic label right there. You can see they changed the logo. That was the blue and green. Of course, uh, yeah, and this is 
in the stereo, uh, not mono. Again, as I mentioned, I'll get down in the weeds on that, but it's in stereo. Yeah, really great if you like Sava, Bossa Nova. Look this up, it is on YouTube. Um, someone's uploaded it, the whole album. It's really excellent. If you do like that style of jazz, like I said, Bossa Nova or Samba. This is kind of a classic rock staple, if you will. It's Grand Funk Railroad and they're at their peak. This is 1970. Uh, I'm not sure where uh, the venue, but this is just incredible. Of course, lead vocalist and lead guitar player, Mark Farner was just a monster. Uh, it's a gate, nice gatefold sleeve. On the inside, you can see there they are on stage. Um, it's not a long track listing, but it's just a super jam rock and album. If, if you like blues rock, these guys, it's just, wow, they knock it out of the park. So um, the highlight on this one for me, on side two, is a track called Inside Looking Out. It's just, it rocks. Um, and then there's a really, side four is one song, clocking in at uh, 12 minutes, 10 seconds. It's called Into the Sun. Really not to be missed. This is really... The sleeve looks a little well used, but again, I'm when I looked at it and then I got home cleaned up, sounds perfect. It's great. Crank it up. It's Grand Funk Railroad. Then they later just shortened their name to Grand Funk Live Album 1970. Not to be missed. If, if you like classic blues rock, that's in your wheelhouse. One more for the road here. I'm going a little long today, but I, I wanted to mention this band. There's a guy I follow. I subscribe to his channel. He's from Australia. I don't know what city. Uh, calls his channel Down Under Tunage, pretty cool name for his channel. Um, and he mentioned this band. He, he'll, he'll talk about a lot of Australian acts and, you know, it would surprise a lot of people. There's more than, you know, Midnight Oil and NXS. There were a lot of bands uh, from Australia that you probably never heard. And here's one right here. It was one album. It's two sisters. They do, there they are on the, on the cover. It's Lindsay and Chrissy Hammond was their names. Uh, apparently the story goes, ACDC, this came out in 81, but ACDC with Bon Scott, uh, their manager or their producer, um, knew the, knew these gals and used to see them on the club circuit in Australia. And um, they did this one album. I don't know if he produced it, but um, it was recorded in Sydney, Australia. This is kind of like, um, oh, I don't know if I'd call it. It's kind of like Pat Benatar meets Joan Jett. It's, uh, you think about Anne and Nancy Wilson when you have two sisters, like Anne and Nancy Wilson from Heart, but it doesn't sound like Heart. It's more like I said, like Joan Jett and the Runaways, um, like the Runaways era of Joan Jett, maybe the first Pat Benatar album. It's pretty listenable. It's pretty, it's pop rock, but it, it you know, they, they kick out the jams. Um, they did have a charting single on this, and that's the first kickoff track on this. It's called Bang Bang. Um, it's on YouTube. Really good uh, live clip of it out there. If you seek it out, it's on YouTube. I looked it up the other night, and it's really great. Um, this was only a 4 or $5 record. And again, uh, the guy at Down Under Tunage, he recommended it. And uh, shout out to him for doing that. I saw this, and I'm like, hey, uh, <laughs> where have I heard that before? Well, I hadn't heard it, but I'd seen the cover of this album, and he, he had shown it before. Of course, it's called Rock and Roll Women, and there they are. And that's what they were. Lindsay and Chrissy Hammond, known as Cheetah. Did the one album, and that was it. Um, just, I don't know if they disbanded and did other things with their lives, but it was just, as the story goes, I couldn't find a whole lot of information about Cheetah. It was a one and done kind of thing. But uh, again, there's a dozen or so highlights uh, from that show I was at in Burlington, Mass. I don't know, probably a month ago. Uh, it was before the marathon. And um, yeah, so we're heading into summer here, hopefully in a couple weeks. So um, there's another show in Connecticut I might go to in a few weeks. A um, bit of a hike from here. It's about two or three hour ride, so I don't know if I'm going to go. Summer, there, are not a lot, a lot of, there aren't a lot of record shows because the weather's good around here. People want to be outside doing stuff, not hanging out in a, in a hotel uh, lobby buying records at a record show. But um, anyway, um, that's a whole thing. But anyway, uh, I'll say goodbye for now. I'll see you in the next video, and uh, hope you enjoyed some of these recommendations. And please, uh, leave me some comments uh, if you liked it or you didn't like it or you have some of these records or you don't. I always like the feedback. I like the banter with other people out there, whether you're a vinyl community video maker or you're just watching these videos for fun. So I wish you a good weekend, what's left of it. I'll see you next time.